and welcome to the show. My name is Alex and this is TechFlow. Today, guys, we're going to be replacing the old Ring doorbell on this house with the new Ring Video Doorbell 2. As well as that, we're going to be protecting this house with the Ring Alarm System, just to see if it's any good. So let's do this. So this is my parents' house and it was built in 1993, so that was 27 years ago now. And 27 years ago they had alarm systems like this, PIR systems that were installed in every single room and then there was like some sort of main control board which I think is here. Now they actually don't use this in this house just because, I mean, times have moved on. 27 years ago we didn't have phones in our pockets so now the alarm on the outside of the house doesn't really do much. You want to be told on your phone that the alarm's going off back at home. So hopefully this is going to do it. Now I actually had a gripe with the first Ring video doorbell and that was the video quality down at 720p just really isn't the best. But this was Ring's first doorbell released now over two years ago. So I say we install the Ring video doorbell too and see what all the upgrades are about. Now obviously everybody knows what a video doorbell is, essentially it's a normal doorbell but it has a video camera in it, a microphone so you can do two-way communication and hopefully barter with the postman and get him to leave your signed for parcels at the door. Say hello to Ring, nice little welcome pouch there. The doorbell looks pretty much identical in size to the other one, possibly actually a little bit thicker here. This is a little bracket to angle the doorbell if you need to point it upwards for whatever reason. Nice, and also a sideways mount as well if you have this, I don't know, on a gate or something and you want to angle it off to the side. I might actually use this today. Installation tools. Probably just a screwdriver and some screws and yeah, that's quite nice that they include all of that in here. That's pretty cool. And now this is super cool. One of the newer things with the Ring Doorbell 2 is that it comes with an interchangeable faceplate. So as you can see here, you can either choose this nice brown one or the silver one, which is pre-installed. And then it actually comes with a new battery system. So you can actually take this battery out, go and take it over to, well, a USB port and charge the battery with a micro USB cable like that. And then when it's charged, you can go and put it back into your doorbell. Pretty cool, but in this instance we're actually going to be hardwiring this doorbell so it will be on 24-7 and won't require us to have to keep charging up this battery. Right, let's go get it installed. <laughs> So the Ring Doorbell 2 has all been mounted, it has a firmware update to do though, so we're going to let it do that and we'll visit it at the end of the video and go through all of its upgrades and what it's all about. But in the meantime, thought we should uh, take a look at this alarm system. Okay, so say hello to Ring. The first thing we are greeted with in this box, I believe, is the base station. Um, it looks like it has some sort of siren in here. We should have an Ethernet port at the back of here. We've got USB and it can also be wall mounted. So this is the hub that needs all the power that's going to control the system. And now in here we've got some sensors and accessories and we've also got our keypad. Now one really nice thing to know about this keypad is it's battery powered. So you can literally mount it right next to the front door. No need to mount or run any cables up to this thing. And then inside of here we have a range extender, we have the contact sensor and we have a motion detector. Nice to see as well that this uh, is being reused for the actual base station template for the screws on the back if you wanted to mount it on the wall. Cool. Now one thing I'm noticing is all of this stuff does feel pretty high quality. We've got a PIR sensor there and our mounting hardware for it. We've also got a door sensor here and then we've also got the range extender which I don't think we're going to need. So with all that out of the box, I think we go ahead and plug this in and try and get it all set up. <laughs> 
So we are up in the server cabinet now. A lot of you will have seen this server cabinet before. If you want to see the entire four part series where we actually networked up this house, you can click that card or I'll put the series link in the bio of this video. But I have set up the base station essentially for the ring system. All it requires is power and Wi-Fi or an ethernet connection into the network, which is what I have given it right here for internet access. And I've gone ahead and set it up through the ring app. So hopefully we can go ahead and leave that's the brain of the operation kind of we can leave it in there we need to go and set up our other devices so this contact sensor is going to be installed on the main door here that is in the hallway and it's the front door so it's a simple sticky pad operation the main unit i'm just gonna stick up there like so and then the second piece goes on the actual door itself so that this contact sensor can tell when the door is opened and we should get an audible chime from the unit upstairs wait now next on the app it's asking me to pull the tab out of the motion sensor to get this set up so there we go flashing in there and literally just like that it's automatically added this motion sensor it's already found it and it's adding it just by pulling that tab out of the back of it that's sick okay so that should just stick there nicely with literally just sticky pads onto the back of it. So, so simple to install. There we go. That is up there nicely. And now the last thing in the box was the Z-Way range extender. So this is essentially good for if you're wanting to buy more sort of contact sensors or PIR sensors and you've got a large house, then you plug this in and it's just going to essentially give you more range than what I assume the base station is going to give you. So I've plugged it in and it's automatically just adding it to the system. There we go. It's just finished. Now I've gone ahead and mounted the keypad in the kitchen because I do like the look of it, it's really well built but it is a little on the large side so down here it goes. We've got a plug socket here and we've got it plugged in just because it's charging but like we mentioned this thing can run off battery power. It has a few cool features this that I've noted so far. So I've turned it on in the settings so that this device actually makes a noise when the front door opens as well as the main control hub box upstairs and then obviously this is how you activate and unactivate the alarm. You can also do that in the app but for now one two three four and then we've got one minute to leave the house okay so now the alarm is set when I open the front door the contact sensor should sense that it's been opened and now prompt me to go ahead and enter the password and unset the alarm and then disarmed sick we're all good now I'm pretty sure all of you guys are going to want to know what will happen if the alarm actually gets breached like a robber comes into the house and doesn't unset it. This is what you're going to hear. There's two separate sirens, one on the keypad and one upstairs too. Yeah, that really isn't the nicest sound in the world. Brand new ring alarm system and doorbell have been installed at my parents house now for about a week. I gave them the logins for the ring applications, they set up their accounts and they've been using it for the last week and they say they've had absolutely zero problems with anything. So I thought to wrap up this video we go through the app and see what settings you get to change. So this is what it is like to protect your entire house with Ring. This is the dashboard of the Ring application. You get to see all of your cameras here. As you can see, we've got the front door, Ring video doorbell too. And if you had any of the Ring stick up cameras, they would also appear here too. Now, if we click on the thumbnail image for the front door camera, as you can see, it loads up a live view of the front door camera. And for those of you wondering about the quality of this camera. So this is the quality of the Ring video doorbell too. Now I've gone to the settings and altered it a little bit to the best of my ability like turn things like HDR on so hopefully you can see all the pretty clouds and all of the ground around me. Now if you go ahead and take your finger and put it on the live bit and swipe backwards you can actually go back in time so if we go back in time we should see 
There we go, there's me leaving the house earlier. And as you can see, when motion is detected, it actually says motion on the timeline so you can see what's actually going on. And you can also see if people are live viewing the doorbell too. Now some things that I noted with the Ring Video doorbell that I really, really liked is the notifications were very, very fast. So when the doorbell actually detected motion at the front door, it would send me a notification saying motion has been detected. If somebody actually presses the doorbell, it rings the doorbell inside of the house and then it it also sends a chime through to your phone and if you click on that it then instantly loads up the live preview and the two-way audio communication so you can speak with whoever's at the door. Now disarmed, home and away are three options we've now got because we own the alarm system. And you can actually go ahead and well arm the alarm from the app or disarm it from the app too. Now there's one thing that I really like about this application and that's that if you open up the sidebar and click on devices and then click on the alarm base station you can actually go and check on and monitor all the individual devices. So as you can see at the bottom here, it says the front door is currently closed and the hallway motion, well, there's no motion detected. You can go into each device. So here is the front door. You can turn on and off the open and closed alert. So everything is essentially a toggle in the application. If there's a notification that you want, if we click on the motion detection, we can actually turn on motion notifications there, which will give us a notification if that sensor detects motion. I think if you were to pick this up to use it to protect your home, you really wouldn't be disappointed. And one of the last little notes that I wrote down on my iPad throughout the last week of testing is that there's actually a SIM card in the main base unit, so it can backhaul to a 3G connection. So if you have a power cut inside of your house, well, everything will stay online because everything, including the base station, has a battery. But obviously, if your power goes out, your internet will probably go out too. So you can pay a monthly subscription cost to have it on 3G. So I hope you've enjoyed this video of protecting my parents house with the Ring video system guys. If you're thinking of getting one, let us know in the comment section down below how you get on with it. Like I say, we've really enjoyed using ours for the last week and here at TechFlow, yes, definitely something that we recommend. But for now, my name's been Alex, this has been TechFlow and we'll see you in the next one. Adios.